Hello viewers, welcome to the Editorial Analysis by Drishti IAS. In this section, we regularly take editorials from various newspapers and news portals for a better understanding of various issues happening in India and around the globe. In this section, we first try to link the editorial with our UPSC syllabus, then we go analytical in order to understand some key points and at last some important concepts. Dear viewers, we truly hope that you like this initiative taken by Drishti IAS and your feedbacks are important for us. So kindly feel free to give your important feedbacks in the comments section. So without any further delay, let's commence our session. Dear viewer, this video is available in Hindi as well. If you wish to watch it, please visit our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS. For your convenience, the link for this video in Hindi has been provided in the description below. Today's editorial is taken from the Indian Express published on 14th of October 2020. The title of today's editorial is Readying the Ground. If we study our today's editorial, we can say that the property cards are a good step, but the real need is conclusive titling. If we try to link today's editorial with our UPSC syllabus, we can link it with GS Paper 3 and primarily with the Land Reforms in India section. Some key points of the today's editorial. 1 lakh farmers receive property cards under the Swamitva scheme and it can be said that it is definitely a step forward towards establishing clear ownership in the country. Also, the Prime Minister highlighted in his speech at the distribution of the cards that this property card will help the farmers to secure credit against the land. Now, if you are talking about the Swamitva scheme, it should be noted that it is a scheme initiated by the Ministry of Rural Development and Panchayati Raj. The scheme was launched on National Panchayati Raj Day, that is April 24th. And the present coverage area, that is the states which have actually implemented the scheme are six in numbers. And they are Haryana, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Economist Hernando de Soto, almost three decades ago in the year 1997, said that almost 80% of the world's land is undercapitalized. And the most important reason for this undercapitalization was because there were no proper provisions of guaranteeing property rights. He said that $9.3 trillion dollars that is $15 trillion in today's term, was lying as dead capital in the developing and underdeveloped nation. And he also said that just because of this insecure property rights, almost $9.3 trillion at that point of time was completely a dead capital in developing as well as underdeveloped nations. The Swamitra scheme in India can only be the first step However, the end game is conclusive titles. Now, when I'm saying conclusive titles, what exactly conclusive titles mean? Conclusive titles are state guaranteed titles where the state guarantees the title for its correctness and provides for compensation in case for any dispute. The guaranteed title system have been developed and adopted in many countries such as Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom and Singapore. Now before we move ahead, it is quite important for us to understand what exactly the Swamitva scheme is. Swamitva scheme, survey of villages and mapping with improvised technology in village areas. Now it is a collaborative effort of the Ministry of Panchayati Raj, State Panchayati Raj Departments, State Revenue Departments and the Survey of India. The aim behind this scheme is to provide an integrated property validation solution for rural India. An integrated property validation, that means if a person claims that this land belongs to him, there has to be a proper validation. Okay. Now, it is a scheme for mapping the land parcels in rural inhabited areas using drone technology and continuously operating reference systems, C-O-R-S. Now the mapping of the lands in the rural inhabited area will be used 
with drone technology and CORS. The mapping will be done across the country in a phase-wise manner over a period of four years starting from 2020 to 2024. Some important benefits of this scheme will be the scheme will help in streamlining planning and revenue collection in rural areas and ensuring clarity on property rights. Like I said, the biggest advantage with such scheme will be there will be a tremendous clarity in ensuring the property rights because majority of the disputes in the rural region of country are somewhere linked with land disputes. The scheme will enable creation of better quality Gram Panchayat development plan using the maps created under the program. Also, one more very good advantage of this scheme would be creation of better quality Gram Panchayat development programs with the help of the maps that will be procured using the drone technology. The Gram Panchayats are constitutionally Mandated for the preparation of Gram Panchayat development plans for economic development and social justice. Now, the Gram Panchayats will be responsible for the making plans or you can say making the entire module which would help in economic development and providing social justice. The Gram Panchayat development program is a participatory process in convergence with schemes of all related central ministries. That means this GPDP will be in convergence with all the schemes of the central government. Now, some history associated with this entire issue. In the late 1980s, the DC Vadhava Committee had pushed for titling based on the Torrance system in force in Australia where the state provides compensation if a land title guaranteed by it is successfully challenged. Now it should be noted that in the late 1980s, a committee named as the DC Vadhava Committee came up with a suggestion and they said that in India also, the titling should be based upon the Torrance system, which is quite prominent in Australia. Now, what exactly this Torrance system is, we have to see this. Now, Torrance title or you can say the Torrance system basically is a land registration and land transfer system in which a state creates and maintains a register of land holdings which serves as the conclusive evidence of title of the person recorded on the register as the owner. Now, very simple, very basic a land registration system, which is created by state and it maintains an entire register of land holdings and under whose name that particular lands belong. And it also serves as an evidence that particular person can show that, see, under this particular title given to me, I am the owner of this particular land. Now, this system was prevalent, quite prevalent at that point of time in Australia. Its name is derived from Sir Robert Richard Torrance, who introduced it as Private Members Bill. Now, initially when Robert Richard Torrance introduced such a provision, he came up with the name which was Private Members Bill. But later on, this bill was enacted as the Real Property Act of 1850. Eight. So DC Vardhava Committee said that in India, there has to be one such provision. Despite the land record modernization scheme, one of the first steps towards conclusive titling starting in 98 and being repurposed as National Land Records Modernization Program in the year 2008. Full digitization has not been achieved. Now it should be noted that even in India, the initiatives were taken towards this particular issue but it got started in the year 1998 and it was renamed in the year 2008 as the National Land Record Modernization Program NLRMP. The aim of this program was to modernize management of land records. Number two, to minimize the scope of land or you can say property disputes. 
Number three, to enhance transparency in land maintenance system. And number four, facilitate moving eventually towards guaranteed conclusive title to immovable property. Now, the most important one is that it would actually, this program would actually facilitate a guaranteed conclusive title. That means this particular title belongs to the person under whose name the property is registered. However, even after the implementation of NLRMP, so far, we haven't achieved 100% digitization of the land records. The Digital India Land Record Modernization Program dashboard shows that the land record in 90.1% of villages across the country have been digitized across the country. Now, the figure which we are reading here is quite promising, 90.1%. The figure seems to be very promising, but there are several issues associated with it, such as the Digital India Land Records, like I said, has shown 90.1% that the land all across the rural region, it is saying that 90.1% of the villages across the country, they have been digitized. But an analysis shows that only 61% of these villages have digitized mutation records. Now, very important for us to understand again what exactly the mutation record is. For example, I'll tell you, first of all, just try and understand the definition of mutation record. Now, it is means transfer or change of title in the record of local municipal body for the concerned property. That means in a local municipal body, whether the transfer or the change of title has been done or not for that particular concerned property. The change in title ownership may occur due to a number of reasons. Now, this initially, chances are very high. Like It happens like this, in fact. A particular land belongs to one generation. That person passes on to the next generation and that next generation passes on to the next generation and process goes on somewhat like this. So, the change in the title ownership can occur due to many reasons like death of the original owner and subsequent transfer of ownership due to inheritance or succession. For example, a person died. Now the entire property will go to the next generation of that particular person. So this actually requires a total update and this updation process is known as keeping the mutation records. So it shows that only 61% of the village, only 61% of the villages have an up-to-dated mutation records. That means that remaining 39% records may have digitized. They might have digitized the land records, but they haven't updated. Okay. The current owner, chances are very high that 39% of the land records which are digitized but they are not up to date with complete information. But these have not been yet updated. Besides, only 41% have a clear record of rights. Maps have been linked in only 40% of the cases. Now it says only 41% have a clear record of right. That means even out of 61%, even out of the 61% updated mutation records, there are only 41% which have a clear record of right. That means there is no dispute associated with the land. And only 40% of the land which have been digitized have a proper mapping. They have a proper map of the area. Survey or the resurvey work has been completed in a mere 11% villages. As per the 2019-2020 NCAER. Now what exactly NCAER is? It is National Council for Applied and Economic Research. Right now, the president of the governing body is Nandan Nilkani and the current director general is Dr. Shekhar Shah. Now, this council was established in the year 1956. So, as per the NCAER Land Records and Service Indexes, it states that states that have implemented land reforms have done better 
on the digitization of records but lag in terms of quality of land records. So it is saying that those states who have actually implemented land reforms, proper land reforms, they are doing well when it comes to the digitization of the records. However, the quality under which they, this particular data is being maintained, it's not proper. Madhya Pradesh, which tops the table, scores around 2.5 out of 5 in terms of updating ownership and 2 out of 5 for recording encumbrances. That means Madhya Pradesh tops the table according to the National Council for Applied and Economic Research that they are maintaining our data even they are at the top but their score is only half that is they have scored only 2.5 points out of 5 points which are required and also they score only 2 points out of 5 for recording income branches. Income branches that means some kind of you can say hindrances problems okay. Now what exactly could be the way ahead? A property card may help secure credit but without clear titles the large scale tenancy that is envisioned to happen under the new farm reforms may not happen till the time the center rolls out a comprehensive land titling law. Now it is very important. Now a property card definitely it will be very useful in order to secure credit for the farmers. But if the government wants to implement the recently introduced farm reforms it is very important very necessary for the government that they should come out with a comprehensive land titling law. The first attempt was made in 2011 following recommendations of the financial services committee in 2009 and then in 2013 some states have implemented their own laws. Now initiatives have been taken in the past. Initiative was taken in 2011, initiative was taken in 2013, however nothing subsequent could come out of it. Some states they have introduced their own laws such as Rajasthan introduced a law in the year 2016 for urban settlements, Maharashtra came up with the same thing in the year 2019. But the situation will only change when the center will bring a comprehensive titling law. The government can set up fast track land dispute courts like as done in Mexico or can implement the Torrance model or follow through with the idea of insurance under the RERA Act. Now the initiatives that government can take is any issue that is related with land dispute. Government should set up fast track land dispute courts where the matters can be resolved. Otherwise if you look at the civil cases, number of civil cases in our courts, they are like unbelievable. So this initiative is to be taken by the government that they should come up with an idea such as fast track land dispute court where these cases can be solved. These cases can be taken and solved as soon as possible. Also the government can come up with the Torrance model about which I told you and also government can come up with an idea of insurance under the RERA Act. Now the question here what is RERA Act? Now the RERA Act is Real State Regulation and Development Act. It was passed by the parliament in the year 2016 and it was it came into effect in the year 2017. Now the primary objective of introducing the RERA Act was to protect home buyers as well as boost investments in the real estate by bringing efficiency and transparency in the sale and purchase of real estate. So this exactly was the RERA Act. There is one authority okay, known as the RERA Authority. So it takes care of all the dispute, all the matters which come to this particular authority and they try to solve it as soon as possible. Niti Aayog announced last year that it would be working on a model law but enacting the law will be the onus of the center. Niti Aayog has also stated that they will come up with something, a new law, but implementing that law would be completely dependent upon the center. Last, the land reforms can't be shelved any longer, especially given how land disputes accounting for nearly two thirds of civil cases choke the courts. So land reforms are the need of a time and it cannot be further delayed. Okay reasons you have right in front of you because of the number of civil cases which are present in our courts. So 
viewers this was about today's editorial some questions associated with today's editorial now some questions on prelims in the preliminary examination they could focus upon like they can ask you what exactly swamitva scheme is when it got came into picture what exactly are the objectives of the swamitva scheme who is the nodal agency they can also ask you about the panchayati raj day when it, it is celebrated so questions like this can come into prelims a mains based question can be land reforms in india are necessary not only to boost agricultural growth but also to eradicate poverty in rural areas discuss okay so viewers thank you very much